Hey, my friends. Hey, families. Um, this is me, Mr. Jackson. Welcome to art class, but the uh, home edition. Um, here I am in my kitchen, and we're going to do a kind of a interesting art project that you, you don't need anything special. We're just going to find everything we need around the house. And you can do the, the this project however you decide you need to. Um, I'm gonna start out real simple and you can keep challenging yourself. So feel free to stop after the first challenge or you can keep um, leveling up because this I'm designing this for um, this lesson for all ages. So it could be kindergarten through fifth grade or if you have an older brother or sister in the house in high school or something, they can, they can help you with it too. Um, but there's lots of opportunities to just kind of expand on this, but feel free if you just wanna stop after the first challenge, that works too. What we're gonna do is we're gonna make a color wheel out of things that we find around the house. Um, and we're gonna keep advancing it a little bit. Uh, and then we'll study a little bit of uh, color schemes at, and see how those color schemes can be used um, to portray like a certain mood or feeling. But first, let's start simple. Let's, we're in my kitchen. Um, let's see if we can make a color wheel with some stuff that we find on the refrigerator. So my son has got lots of magnets that he plays with on the refrigerator. So this should be pretty easy, I think. But we should start out with the three primary colors. You all know what those are? yellow, red, and blue. So let's find something yellow. I think that'll work. And I'm gonna put that at the top. And now let's try to find something blue. That's easy, I think this should work. I'm gonna put that here. So essentially we're gonna make a little bit of a triangle to begin with. So now the only primary color I'm missing is red. Let's see if I can find something red. There we go. Red, so now I've got a triangle of the three primary colors. So it's yellow melon, blue building square, and a red letter M. This is where it gets kind of tricky. You can put those three primary colors anywhere you want on the color wheel, but then the secondary colors, um, those get trickier because you can't just put them anywhere. So let's see, yellow and blue together make green. So let's find something green. So I can't just put this green magnet anywhere, I gotta put it between yellow and blue. And now red and blue, we know that makes purple. So I've got this magnet of an eggplant. And I'm gonna put that between red and blue. And let's see, the last secondary color we need is when you mix red and yellow, what do you get? Orange. So let's find something orange. Got one right here. Another building block. So let's take a closer look at this. So there we go, we've got our color wheel with the three primary colors, yellow, red and blue. And remember the three primary colors, something that's special about those is you cannot mix other colors to make them. Um, but you can use them to make all other colors. So like I said, yellow, red, and blue. And then we've got our secondary colors, which is just an even mixture of the two primary colors beside it. So yellow and red, we have orange. Yellow and blue, we have green. Red and blue, we have purple. All right, so let's see if we can make this a little trickier. Okay, so your next challenge, if you've done the color wheel in your kitchen, um, 
I want you to move to another room in your house, your living room, your bedroom, laundry room, whatever, and see if we can make another color wheel out of some things that we find I'm gonna use my living room. And there's my dog, Raska. She will probably not move this entire video. So I'm gonna switch cameras and we're gonna make a color wheel in the living room. Get a white background so all the colors can really pop. I'm gonna take my blanket. And I'm gonna flip it over so we have a nice white background. And let's start out with the three primary colors. So I'm looking around and I see something yellow for sure. You don't have to start with yellow, but just start with the primary colors. So there's the top of my color wheel. And I'm seeing something red already. My son's socks that he took off earlier. And I'm going to put those right there. And now, something blue. My son's art kit. I'll put that here. So now I've got that triangle of the primary colors. And now I've got to find the secondary colors. Organize it a bit. So let's see, what goes between yellow and red? Orange. So I've got to find something orange. Let's see. There we go. The fox. He's mostly orange. Now I'm going to put Mr. Fox between red and yellow. And now between blue and red, mix those together, we get purple. Let's see if I can find something purple. And this jumps out to me. Purple yoga mat. So I'm going to put that right here. And now what's the last color we need? The last secondary color that we need? Green. And let's see. I think, hmm, something green. Something green that I can move easily. Hmm. <laughs> See, my footstool is kind of a bluish green, so I'm going to try to find a green green. And we'll go with this book, Edible Wild Plants. And I'm going to put that right here. And there we have our color wheel. Now, if you want to challenge yourself even more, try to find the tertiary colors. So, let's see if we can find some colors like that might go between yellow and green and I think when I look I see this is like a yellowish green it's got a, a little more yellow than blue in there so I'm gonna put that right there and this might get a little tricky but um, let's see if I can find something to go in between yellow and orange Yep. So, I just looked around quite a bit and the tertiary colors can be kind of hard to find. Um, but luckily, I was able to go outside and I did find pretty quickly something that I think kind of belongs between red and purple. Um, I also just happened to find this missing Candyland card that I think belongs right between red and purple as well. Um, and this, if you can see it, I think is kind of on the blue side of purple. So um, I did find some other things to fill in the gaps, but just try your best. If you don't find it, all the tertiary colors, then don't worry about it. And Honestly, you could keep going forever and ever because there's just no limit to the 
different values and shades of each color. So um, just give it a shot if you're up to the challenge and when you feel like you've done enough, you can move on to the next thing. So I'm gonna put this little guy right here and these two here between my red and purple. So here's my living room plus outside color wheel. Oh, you know what just occurred to me? Blue green right here. So if you feel like you've got the color wheel down with the primary and secondary colors and maybe some tertiary colors, um, there's another way you can actually start to use the color wheel to make decisions about your artwork or even your outfits. So I like to divide it into color schemes and there's lots of different color schemes to think about. Um, one of the easier ones is warm and cool. So you can divide the color wheel in half and you get warm colors like red, yellow, and orange. Or you can put it on the other half and you get the cool colors like blue, purple, and green. Um, but there's lots of other uh, color schemes other than warm and cool. There's monochromatic, which I wore a blue shirt and blue pants and a kind of dark blue hat. That'd be monochromatic. So even if they're different shades of the same color, the fact that I'm wearing all the different types of blue that's monochromatic. So mono meaning one and chroma is color. Now, another thing, um, another color scheme you can think about is colors that are all the way across from each other on the color wheel. So you have red and green, you have purple and yellow, and orange and blue. And those are called complementary colors. Uh, so if you were to mix those two colors together, you'd get some sort of neutral color. But also when they're next to each other, not mixed, they really pop out. So I have a blue shirt on and a blue hat. And then if I were to put on an orange sweater, you can see it makes everything kind of pop. Because orange, and blue are completely opposite on the color wheel. So artists use those kind of things to make decisions about their artwork all the time. And you can use it, not only in your artwork, but you can use it every day when you're making decisions about what to wear. Think about uh, what you would wear to a party as opposed to a really important meeting. Would you choose something that's monochromatic for the important meeting? Um, and something complimentary for the party. There's lots of other arrangements and options and ways that colors together can make you feel different ways. So feel free to try that next time you're picking out an outfit. Think about the colors you're choosing and why you're choosing them.